okay, Josephina? You're all good? Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, this meeting is to consider applications for minor variance and consents that's held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of our process is to review that uh, proposal that's before us, listen to all the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist uh, between the town individuals or other organizations. If a request for a deferral is made this evening, and the committee grants such a request, the committee, after we consult with our secretary treasurer, will set a new hearing date. There will be no further notice uh, provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we've adopted the following process that we are gonna follow tonight. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing process. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for the presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record, and any materials submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of our committee tonight. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose the application must also state their full name and address for the record, and we'll provide a maximum of five minutes to uh, make the presentation as well. All remarks and questions are to, to be directed to the chair of the committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes, again, will be discretion of our committee. If there are several speakers this evening that share the same view, please select the spokesperson to communicate the group's combined opinion. We want to hear all the views and all the evidence and all the concerns, but uh, covering the same points doesn't assist us. The owner or agent will then be provided a further five minutes to respond to comments uh, made by any interest parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the owner or agent has any concerns found in the staff report, particularly with any of the proposed conditions, this will be your opportunity to advise us. At that point, uh, we close the presentation from the floor and the matter will be taken to the committee for a decision and there's no further discussion from uh, those in attendance. Once a committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file with our secretary treasurer at this meeting a written request for the decision, and we've provided green sheets in the back table that you could use and fill out and leave it with us before you depart the, this evening. Please note that you must make your written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Municipal Board for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of our decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 days for the consents. Don't believe we have any consents this evening. Um, uh, this uh, notice will be provided to the applicant, the owner or agent, or any other person who's filed a written request for such uh, notice. If you do not agree with our decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Municipal Board. The last date to appeal the decision to the Ontario Municipal Board will be noted on the decision itself. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, our decision becomes final and binding, and the Secretary Treasurer will then send a letter to the applicant uh, advising them of that. People attending the committee uh, meeting are to be courteous to and respectful members of the committee, town staff, and other people in attendance this evening. We also want to let you know that tonight's meeting will be live streamed and available for future viewing on the town's live stream page at uh, oakville.ca backslash live. And we ask if we can put our cellular phones on mute or silent or somehow doesn't interrupt our meeting, that'd be great. Okay, so um, are there are no regrets this evening. Is there anyone, uh, any members have any declaration of any pecuniary interest? See none? Okay. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that wishes to either withdraw or defer an application? Anyone wishing to, okay, sir? May we please have your name and address for the record and which application? Hey, this, my name is Adrian Hordeck. Uh, for 2055 Markle and this is I'm, application CAVA 172 2017 yes okay do you want personal address or address of the um, of the agents no your mailing address okay uh, 1379 
Bunnell Drive, Burlington, Ontario. Okay. Is there anyone here this evening that has an interest in this application at CAVA 172 2017 at 2055 Markel Drive? Okay, I presume you want some opportunity to discuss uh, some of the matters contained in the staff's report? Yes, so after reviewing the, uh, the report from the planning department, the, um, the applicant and the agent have decided to make some changes, and as such, we would like to defer the application until okay. a further, further meeting. Members, you're satisfied with the concern? All in agreement with the deferral request? Okay, so that matter will be deferred. The earliest date that we have is October 24th. Let me just confer with our... Uh, does that give you plenty of time to yes, do your does. consultation with staff? Yes. Okay. There'll be new notice on this. I presume that uh, the application will change somewhat. That will require new notice. Okay. Thank you. So you're on the 24th, and we need you uh, to provide us with uh, any revised plans and the list of variances that you're going to need on or before. What's the deadline? Next week. End of next week. Is that, are you sure? Next week. And what time? Like what part of next week? End of next week? Okay. Okay. Because right. we don't want to set a date if you can't meet that. No, no worries. Okay. So yep. we'll set you on October 24th, and you need to get the plans in in time to ensure the notice goes out with your yep. advice. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Your, uh, your matter is adjourned, sir. Right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to withdraw or adjourn an application? Okay, we have a short agenda tonight with a lot of people, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Okay, so we'll proceed with our first application, CAVA 170 2017 at 421 Chartwell Road. Good evening, sir. Can we have your name and address for the record? Yeah, my name is Charles Shin. I'm the homeowner of 421 Chartwell Road. Okay, Mr. Shin, welcome. Um, and your address, uh, 519 Blendown Crescent? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone here this evening that has an interest in this application, CAVA 170-2017, for 20, uh, 421 Charlotte Road? Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you have areas of concern you want to express. Sir, we uh, proceed with the presentation on your application. Sure. Um, so I applied for a building permit for 421 Chartwell Road in the early part of the summer. Um, we work with our architect to make sure that we stayed within the building code. Uh, the house uh, that currently sits on Chartwell is facing Chartwell as Chartwell address, the uh, garage is on Chartwell. And so we submitted our application with the assumption that we wouldn't be here today. Um, our permit went in, we were told actually the front of Chartwell is not Chartwell, that's not the front of our house that the actual front is Lynbrook, which is uh, the side of the house that actually has a creek that runs through it as well as a concrete bridge. Um, based on our designs of the house, that house needs to be tilted and, and the codes need to be, or I guess our, our request, uh, w w our design does not meet the building code in the sense that um, our depth of the house is deeper than uh, permitted if we tilt the house. Uh, so therefore, my request is for a variance to increase the depth of the house to 25.3 meters from the current 20 meters. Um, it's a very large lot. It's 21,000 square feet. Um, there's still, from the rear yard, we'll have 19 meters of, of backyard. Uh, so it's a very generous lot. Um, all other aspects of the house and the drawings have uh, meet within the code. So given that we found out that the front of the house is not Chartwell and it now is actually Lynbrook from a building perspective. Um, we were here to ask for a variance uh, to increase the size or increase the, the depth. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Shin at the moment? Seeing none. Okay, sir, just have a seat uh, in the front there. Don't go too far and we'll invite you back after you hear whatever concerns may exist uh, Ma'am? Good evening. Name and address for the record? Um, Julie Ince, 1020 Limbrook Road. Oak 1020 Road. Limbrook? Yes. Okay, I have you on this little map here. Okay, so our property is you're, adjacent. You're to the east? Yes, so okay, we're adjacent. Gotcha. We're the other side of the creek. Yes. And um, first I'd like to say that we have no issues with the design of the house. The house looks 
very pleasant, especially compared to the, the wreck that's on there at the moment. But our concern is that when we bought this property, and we've recently been going through this process ourselves, we have been studious to comply with the strict conservation regulations about not infringing on that development limit into the creek. You know, and one of the reasons that attracted us to buy the house in the first place, and also to redevelop rather than to move, was that we felt reassured that there would never be an infringement upon the creek. And five meters is a large amount of space. Um, so we feel a little bit disappointed that having followed the regulations very thoroughly ourselves, we're now looking at a house being built into that very special area that we were led to believe would be completely protected. So that is, that is our main concern. We have another concern that there's a Juliet balcony that will look onto our property and our understanding of the bylaw is there's no first floor balconies. Now there's a flat roof below it, so my concern is obviously that could become an access point. And then our, our third query was really why the, they can't comply with the bylaw and why they have to be 25% over what they're supposed to be. So that's, it's, it's mainly a sort of, our most um, concer biggest concern is really that infringement on the creek, which my understanding would have been very protected as a natural environment, particularly okay. because the infringement will be a pool and a deck, and those sort of areas, they're social, they can be noisy, um, and so it, we don't think it's necessarily conducive. Okay. Um, just just so we can all, because I think what we're lacking is a little bit of orientation with the plan. Okay. It may help yep. us, Mr. Shin. Yep. Do you have your site plan? I do. Can you put it on? Can you put it on the overhead there? See where it says "place document" here. Yeah. If you place the document there, someone magically is going to zoom in. Maybe. Okay. So can you point to Lindbrook? Here comes the magic. Here comes the magic. Okay, can you point to, uh, uh, to uh, Chartwell Road? Can you point to the creek? Okay, can you tell us how the depth is measured? The depth is measured from here to here. So on that oh, maybe we zoomed in a bit too much. So, so, so if the depth was measured from Chartwell, uh, it would be in compliance. Correct. And because Lindbrook from what you told us, is now the frontage. The depth is measured from there to the back, and that's where you get your 25 meters? Yeah, so the extension I'm asking for is this, not there. Okay. So, it's, so, so you're, uh, you're, not, on the, you're on the other side. Of so the you're field. not going to go that way? You're no, going that I'm way. going, going oh, okay. to the that, other side. Well, that's, 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 that's why I put the site plan up, because yeah. I, I kind of uh, understood your concern to be, you see where those magic lines are drawn, sir? Can you show the development limit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so whereabouts are you infringing on that? Because my understanding that it turns um, eastwards. Uh, sorry? You're infringing on the Yeah, there's, um, the plan is to put some decking, and we've been approved, or the Halton Cubs conservation approval for that, um, the way it sits today. But, it, but is that section that you are infringing on? Uh, that is within, that's past the development line, yeah. But three meters plus from the top of the bank, which is what Halton Conservation is for. So the Halton Conservation regulates structures within uh, their regulatory limits, and Mr. Shin has indicated that approval from them would be required. Would be required. So would be required. Yeah. It's not been received already, but it, it has. It has. So, so I oh, have a okay. Halton. So we've gone through full building permit submission. Um, so. Uh, so you satisfy Conservation Halton for those areas that correct. you show that go beyond the development limits? Correct. And they're the authority that have jurisdiction over that? Correct. And in terms of privacy, I, I will assure you that we will respect that. Okay. Uh, that would for be appreciated. Sure. Is there any questions of both uh, the neighbor and Mr. Shin? Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak to this application, CAV A170-2017 at 421 Shartwell Road? Okay. Thank you Thanks. to both. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take this matter to committee. Who would like to move a recommendation? Mr. Tulowski, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'll move that this application be approved as applied for. 
finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act and the variance is really a technical variance necessitated by the bylaw definition of frontage. I'd note that uh, the adjoining neighbor did come out to voice some concerns and I believe Mr. Chair through the discussion the questions that the neighbor had were satisfactorily answered. I'd make that approval subject to development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a permit issue within two years. <coughs> Thank you Mr. Talowski. Any discussion or recommendation? So all those in support? No one opposed that application is being approved subject to those conditions. Okay, we'll proceed with our second application, CAVA 171-2017 at 230 Reynolds Street. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Terry Martino, Grand Weiss Architect and Associates, and we are the agents for Mr. and Mrs. Valley at 230 Reynolds Street. Thank you, sir. Um, anyone here this evening have an interest in application CABA 171-2017 at 230 Reynolds Street? Okay. I ask because our procedural bylaw, Mr. Martino, allows us to dispense of the full presentation where circumstances weren't. Uh, in this instance, uh, staff are recommending approval subject to a condition, and uh, we haven't received any correspondence or any emails on this application. We've done our site visit, uh, read the staff report, understand the application members do you have any questions any uh, items of interest that you wish to uh, ask mr martino see none sir is there anything you wish to add uh, not at this time mr chair no okay well on that basis we'll take this matter to committee uh, who would like to move a recommendation mr hardcastle thank you um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, having reviewed the materials and uh, undertaken a site visit, um, I'm of the position, uh, similarly to staff, that the uh, proposed addition will not present any negative impacts on the abutting properties. Um, and uh, accordingly, the um, proposal conforms with the four tests of the Act, so I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to two conditions, the first being that the proposed addition be constructed in general accordance with the approved heritage permit plans, and the second that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision. And, and Mr., uh, uh, I may have mis, uh, misled you, we do have as part of our addendum uh, number one package uh, a petition signed by some uh, neighbors, uh, seems to be four, correct sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, there were four letters okay. of... So uh, we'll, we'll note that on the record, yes. there were four letters of support. Okay, thank you for the recommendation, and we'll add that uh, yeah. addendum. Yes. Oh, the second condition? Yeah. There's a second recommended by staff? Yes. That the proposed addition be constructed in general accordance with the approved heritage permit plans? Said that. You said that? Yeah, I said that. Oh, very well. I, I got distracted. Thank you. So uh, we have uh, the approval subject to those two conditions. Any discussion or recommendation? Seeing on all those in support, and no one opposed your application being approved. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll skip to uh, application CAVA 172. Nope, we're going to go to uh, CAVA 173 2017 at 1239 Sedgwick Creek, Crescent. Sedgwick Crescent. Good evening, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Helder Aguiar. I'm at uh, 603 York Street in Oakville. I'm the uh, agent uh, here to represent uh, the client. Okay, thank you, sir. Again, I'm going to see if there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in application CAVA 173-2017 at 1239 Sedgwick Crescent. Okay, there's a few. Show of hands. Any more? Okay, more than a few. Okay, so please proceed with the presentation, sir. Um, quite simply, we had the original proposal the client uh, had presented. We reviewed um, with Kate on several occasions to try to uh, make adjustments to, to kind of conform to what we believe the town would uh, be happy with. Made all those changes, came back, and uh, as you can see, there's full support of the You're staff. You need to amplify your voice. Sorry, there that's you normally go. not an issue, but <laughs> um, so. 
we have full support of the staff, as you can see. Uh, I canvassed you know, the neighborhood to uh, speak with uh, all the neighbors, as many as I could. We had uh, you know, a grand majority of them in the backyard at the site, uh, even yesterday, trying to address any uh, concerns that they had, answer any questions. Um, we have four letters of support um, as well. Our clients have a specific requirement to have uh, three cars parked in the garage as opposed to on the driveway or on the street. So um, we're asking for that third garage space in that tandem area. Um, the other lot coverage, um, I guess, adage is, is due to just a canopy at the front and uh, side portion. Sorry, say that again? The the, there is also like a, um, a lot coverage adage that revolves around just an architectural detail at the front um, of the house, like a canopy. Can you show us with the plans? Yep. Would you like to see the, uh, the elevations? Well, we, un I, we understand the garage. You're saying you need a, 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 lar a slightly larger garage uh, to accommodate the three vehicles, but then uh, variance number three talks about coverage. Uh, you're, you wish 31.52% uh, and whereas 25 is permitted. And I guess just so we know where this uh, additional coverage is coming from. And I, I presume you comply with the gross floor area limitations, yes, okay? It's this canopy just here at the, near the front door. It has a small coverage and it wraps around to the side, to the side entrance of the house as well. So it's for those two reasons that we're over on the lot coverage. I see. So if you're greater than 10, seven meters, then you're, you have a different. Correct. Okay. I remember the, I remember that provision. Okay. Anything, anything else you were to add, sir? No. So what, what's, what was the, in your view, what's the intent of that zoning regulation? Of the, uh, the lot coverage? No, the maximum lot coverage is 25%, mm -hmm. where the detached dwelling is greater than seven meters in height. And then you want, uh, so when your detached dwelling is greater than seven meters in height, you have a, a, a reduced lot coverage, I guess, right? Correct. 25%. Yes. And you're and so you're so you're saying well despite having a dwelling that's greater than seven meters in height I want to have thirty one point five two percent. Yes. It's so I'm uh, asking you what what do you think is the intent of having that regulation in the bylaw? Um, hmm. Well, basically to try to conform as closely as possible to um, to the adjacent properties, like as as you read in the staff report as well. And I mean it's really an architectural feature and one specific requirement that the client has due to the number of cars that they own. Um, and that's why we're not over on gross floor area or any setbacks. We're well beyond, we're, we are well under in height as well. Uh, we were very sensitive to the, uh, some of the adjacent houses as well, having a one story garage and sort of tearing back um, in terms of height as we went back into the lot, because it's a corner lot. Um, there's a large two-story across the street across Sedgwick and the property uh, next to us on the north side um, has had an addition done to it but again it's sort of that's a split level single and two-story um, has that front elevation that's very similar okay thank you sir anything else no question mm -hmm. I believe I heard you say that the reason for the increase in lot coverage was because you made the garage a three-car garage and the area measured under that canopy yes. is that a correct and and that mathematically accounts for the increase from 25 to 30 so that's 6.52 percent lot coverage those two pieces yes sir okay thank you any further questions of the agent see none okay sir if you can have a seat nearby there was a show of hands and we'll try to who would like to come down first good evening good evening sir name and address for the record my name is kevin mccauley and i live kevin? at two kevin last name mccauley mccauley yep okay 238 sandwell drive it's the house next door As you mentioned, there are a few other people here. I will uh, start with some concerns. Others may Okay, decide. are you representing a group of people? I am. 
If okay. I don't cover everything, I will ask to see if anyone Okay, why don't you, uh, do you know their addresses or their names? You can do it that way, and if they, if they feel that you missed something, they're welcome to come and tell us. I or would you just want to cover them? Because what we don't want to hear is repetition, as you heard earlier in the preamble. No, and I, I assure that there won't be repetition. I don't okay. have the list of addresses. Let's proceed. Okay. And if they wish to put themselves on the record, they're welcome to come up and do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'll start by saying this isn't about not uh, supporting development. Most of the people here have either put additions or renovated their homes, um, including the builders worked on a house down the street which adds to the character of the neighborhood. Um, our major concern is the increase in lot coverage, driven primarily by the increase in the garage, uh, has an impact on the mature canopy of the trees surrounding the home. Uh, given the orientation of the new driveway, which moves from Sedgwick to Sandwell, there are three mature trees that will be removed to accommodate the driveway and the front entrance. Given the extension of the garage back into the yard, there's another two or uh, one or two mature trees that will uh, be impacted, most likely removed uh, from, uh, from the property, which will have a significant impact given that it is a corner lot. It will remove all of the large uh, canopy trees um, that uh, add to the character of the neighborhood. In addition, there is a further plan to build a swimming pool in the backyard, which will be on the southwest corner of the property, we are told. There is a significant, uh, significantly large tree, uh, greater than 120 inches in, in diameter, um, sorry, circumference, um, that backs on to Patricia Picknell School, which given its canopy, I'm not sure how it will survive if a pool goes in there. And there is a small grove of seven mature cedar trees in the northwest corner of the lot, which will most likely be removed to create a backyard space once the garage extension and the swimming pool have been uh, put in. So the major concern is due to the increase in the square footage uh, or the coverage of the lot and the orientation of the driveway is the, the implication to the, the mature canopy, which will then take away from uh, sight lines for the, uh, the neighbors here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. McCauley. Any questions to Mr. McCauley? Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to the committee? Yes, please. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Carol Vesters. I live at 233 Sandwell Drive with my husband, which is directly across from the proposed structure on the side where the driveway is being relocated to. I do have pictures. 233. So our view, just to put it in perspective for you, we are looking here at 1239 across from our home. Uh, to avoid duplication, I speak also for Paul and Sharon Johnson at 227 Sandwell Drive and Bruce and Barb Norman at 221 Sandwell Drive. They have similar views of the property. There are two houses, the house next to us and the house one further down. So their views are a little bit more like that. Uh, and I also represent other concerned neighbors, Neil and Cheryl Christofferson at 245 Sandwell Drive. Our concern lies with the mass of the dominant size of the proposed structure in conjunction with the stark design using materials which look to be not at all compatible with any of the neighboring homes. We have reviewed the cursory st staff recommendation which recommends approval of the variances but do not agree with their conclusions and have two observations for the committee to consider. Firstly, there have been multiple new builds on the street and based on available information on the Town of Oakville website, none of these houses have required a variance. This is a view um, of the new homes which have recently been built directly south of the property at 1239 Sedgwick. As you can see, they are not small homes, but they have been built within the existing bylaws. 
we are concerned with the exception that has been suggested in this case to allow increased lot coverage. Our concerns lie with the effect it will have on the surrounding existing homes with regards to privacy, shadowing, and views, including the concern that was already mentioned that there would be less undeveloped property remaining to accommodate mature tree growth and tree canopy. Secondly, this is a view of the proposed house as seen from our property. I'm not really getting it all on there, but. Can somebody do that? I don't know how to do that. Oh, it's, there's a manual zoom there, like a joystick. <laughs> I'm too to touch anything. No, don't touch it. It can't, it can't get any worse. <laughs> there you go. We got someone who can help you with the joystick. Okay. This fellow behind you. Yeah, because it seems like the way the way it presents itself is so close. Yes, oh, I'm trying to get the, yeah, thank you. That's perfect. Okay, so as mentioned, this is the proposed view as seen from our property. I'm not the only one looking at this rendering that has suggested that this looks like an industrial commercial unit with two loading doors. I also wonder at the flat roof design on the garage in question if there is going to eventually be a request for another minor variance to allow for a second story on top. There are a variety of styles of home designs in our neighborhood, including contemporary. A mix is very desirable and contributes to the interest and appeal of our neighborhood. However, the modern ones have used materials that soften the square design and they still have available land space to sustain mature trees in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. Here is one example. I understand that the committee is not generally interested in the aesthetics of a new build. Yet I have to ask, if this design being proposed here is deemed to fit in with the character of our neighborhood, what design would not? In closing, we are asking the committee to refuse the variances as they do not meet the four tests. Character, as just discussed, control of size, this proposal is seeking an, ex an exception to size bylaws where others have not. Appropriateness for the property. This is a predominant corner lot which creates impact on multiple sight lines. And minor, this variance proposal is not minor in its overall effect to the neighborhood as it is requesting a house and an oversized garage with an overall design more suited for a commercial building versus a home in an established neighborhood. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any questions? Can you, we're going to have to keep those things yeah, if you don't mind. Fine. So just, just leave them there in case okay. we need them again. Someone else may need them for their presentation as well. Uh, who else would like to speak to the committee on this matter? Okay. So, sir, back to you. The, uh, who, where's the agent? There you are. While you're coming down, it would help me if you can put up that same elevation, the northeast elevation that you have as part of your package. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this, around this provision in the bylaw that says you're entitled to a 25% lot coverage where your dwelling is greater than seven, seven meters. In other words, in height. if you go seven meters height, the dwelling, then you got a smaller box to work with. And if you're less than that, I guess there's a different regulation for this, for this purpose, for this design. So can you take this elevation, northeast elevation? Yeah, I, be I believe if it was a, a one-story home. Right, but can you meters, take that elevation, yep, the northeast yeah, I'm, elevation? I'm, I'm grabbing it right now. Yeah, because, because you're, you have here uh, uh, imperial measurements, and I'm not very good at conversion. So I, I want you to draw where that seven-meter line is. Or maybe show us where that seven meter line is. Which would have allowed us to actually cover more of the lot. That's where you're, you're going with that? No, I just want to know where okay. that seven meter is. Uh, like, like I can't tell from, from these plans. Seven meters is what? About seven and a half is 25 uh, feet. So seven meters is about 23 and a half, 24. Correct. So can you draw, just put that uh, plan, the northeast elevation plan, on the overhead, Darrell, take one of the overhead uh, that uh, the neighbor had, 
that one there, and just approximate where that seven meter line is. So you show top of slab at 99.8 and that 24. You have almost to the top is where we, where we would be, right around here, because you're showing 12 feet plus this additional one and a half foot. So you're at 13 and a half. Then so it's uh, to feet. top of steel three. You're, so you're somewhere much in close to the top of the building. Like it was really close to something we actually considered, but it would have increased the lot coverage we would have been allowed to cover more of the lot by doing that, being under those seven meters. So it's really close. That's so what what's saying. what's in that space above that, above the seven meters? Um, well, it's it's a roof pack, basically, because there's no peaks or anything else. That's why it's, it's actually much lower than any, of, and I built one of those houses, as was explained, than the houses that were shown in these images. So that's a parapet? It's a parapet, exactly. And the, and the uh, roof assembly itself. So you have like the, your, your, your roof and then the parapet that's like six or, or eight inches or so above that. Okay, I just wanted to get a perspective on that. So I, I just wanted to say the reason why I asked is I wanted to go back to your comment that uh, I think it's a question that Mr. Charlebaugh asked about what's driving the, the coverage and you said it had to do with the height of the garage. What was your question again, Mr. Charlebaugh? whether the increase in coverage from the 25% requested to the 31.52, so 6.52% was related solely to the canopy and the extra space in the garage. Which I have to admit, I'm struggling with mathematically, but it's a big canopy there, so it's hard for me to figure that out. Okay, well, I'm struggling with that as well because when I see this, it's the height of the building and I, I don't see a relationship back to the canopy and the garage. I mean, your building is more than seven meters. Which, like every new house, I mean, it's it's even to fit a, a regular. Right. Your your having the seven meters is rare, on any new house. Right. Well, we're going to ask our planner after here for okay. a, a sort of a little bit of understanding of the intent. But I just wanted to have it from you, what your appreciation was. So that we, you had some comments from the neighbors. Yeah, if I could just point that out, like we have had a full arborist report. Again, I was candid and open with the neighbors, uh, addressing all their concerns, or at least trying to answer them um, with the information that I had. The Iris report um, notes that there are only two trees, um, as mentioned, where the new garage entry would be on Sandwell. That would be this tree here, which is um, an apple tree, and um, this one here as well. Yeah, I think there was pictures of those. Yep. <laughs> no, we we can see it. That's okay. that's a good. So that's zoom. the apple tree right here. Yes. And the only other tree that would need to be taken down is this one here. Okay. So Thank you. I um, I spoke to the clients after the meeting because again I didn't want to speak out of turn. Uh, There's a cherry tree. Basically, the the property to the north is the one that would be most impacted. And there's a cherry tree right on the property line that the clients. Um, would absolutely want to keep and there's a, a white birch as well and there's notes to that effect in the arborist report that those trees uh, don't have to be removed and they create privacy obviously for my client and uh, and the neighbor um, so we discuss even a new fence and those types of details like down to that level so those trees wouldn't be removed uh, the client plans on adding again we're not at the point of a landscape you know plan or design um, but there's going to be extensive landscaping. And I explained to the neighbors that, uh, you know, the town has a pretty strict policy. And when you are affecting, you know, the existing canopy, et cetera, there's, you know, many, many trees that have to replace what, whichever ones you are removing, as opposed to before that change that you could remove four trees per year, et cetera. So I, uh, I talked to that as well. Okay, thank you. 
Any questions of the, the agent? Okay, seeing none, we'll take this matter to committee. Thank you. Uh, no, before we do, uh, Ms. Mihalich, I had a question on, uh, on, um, on the intent of that provision. It seems like council turned their mind to the bylaw requirements that if you're a certain height and there's a less, lesser provision, I don't know what the rest of the table says. Um, and, and I guess I was struggling to make the link between the canopy and the garage size vis-a-vis -vis the, the coverage because I don't see them linked. But maybe I'm wrong, so help me. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee, the intent of that particular regulation under the new zoning bylaw, it really actually speaks to the, the relationship between lot coverage and residential floor area ratio. Um, it has to do with the fact that if you are providing for a dwelling that is under seven meters in height, typically that is a one-story dwelling, to allow for additional floor area to be accommodated in that style of house. If you are providing for a two-story dwelling, so a dwelling higher than seven meters in height, then you are uh, accommodating less of floor area on the ground floor and more floor area in the second floor to uh, have the effect of uh, a comparable floor area between either the lower or the taller building structure. Uh, the relationship and intent of that particular provision is to assist in regulating the mass and scale of the dwelling, uh, which in our opinion, we believe that it does. The proposed dwelling, uh, albeit over the 25%, provides very generous setbacks, greater than what is required by the bylaw in terms of the building envelope, as you can see by the plans that have been submitted. Okay, thank you for that. Any questions arising from that? Okay, we'll take this matter to committee. Thank you. Okay. Who would like to move a recommendation on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to move a recommendation. Um, I'm satisfied with the uh, with the client's uh, presentation and. Um, the report by staff, uh, I have to reiterate that yes, they are providing generous rear and uh, interior side yard setbacks that the request before us in terms of the garage uh, area is internal, so there's no apparent uh, negative impacts on the outside. While I um, appreciate uh, the comments from the neighbors with respect to uh, design and compatibility with the neighborhood, we're not in a position to dictate uh, design or housing stock materials. Um, and in terms of losing some tree canopy, uh, I believe that with the satisfaction of the arborist report and the explanation that the client has put forth, that um, most of the trees that the uh, neighbors were concerned about are indeed protected. Um, having said that, um, and uh, I do note on record the letters of objections that we've received from the various neighbors. Um, I'd like to move a recommendation to um, approve this application as set before us. Uh, I feel that it does meet the four tests in terms of um, desirability for the development of the land, as well as the, um, the variances being minor and mitigated uh, through uh, design as well as um, uh, setbacks. Um, having said that, I'll move a motion to approve this application. Uh, subject to the conditions that uh, are set before us, there are two conditions. Our standard condition that uh, approval will expire within two years if the development has not proceeded and or building permit not issued, uh, as well as the condition uh, that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated August 24th of 2017 as submitted. Okay, thank you. Discussion on a recommendation? See none. All those in support? Anyone opposed? Your application is being approved, sir. Thank you. Uh, application CAVA 174 2017 at 1300 Marlboro Court.
So who's here for 1300 Marlboro Court at CAVA 174 2017? The agent here? No agent here? The owner here? Well, who's here to speak to the application? Who filed the application? Okay. Then you're representing the... Uh, So you're representing the Condominium Corporation? Yes, I am, Mr. Okay, Chairman. your name and address? My name is Karen Murphy. I live in Unit 317 at 1300 Marlboro Court. I am this on is the Halton Condo Corporation? Number 59, that's right. Number 59? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's just see if there's anyone here this evening that has an interest in the application CAVA 174 2017 at 1300 Marlboro Court. Well, let's have your name. My name's Brad Huxton, and I live at 1300 Marlboro Court. Okay, thank you. Uh, and so I saw some hands up there. Is there anyone that has an interest in the application CAVA 174-2017, 1300 Marlboro Court? Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't know. I saw hands. <coughs> And I want to make sure before I ask the, the uh, representative here to speak to the application in detail, or we can just go into, uh, you're here in support. Well, yes, you got to come down though. I don't like screaming. Well, okay, we'll, we'll make it easy. Why don't you stand up, give us your name and address in the event. Uh, Well, you know what, we, we're, we have rules and procedures, but we also want to be efficient and effective. So why don't you just come down and uh, have the questions and we can have a, a very quick, uh, you know, see how we can help you. So this is a variance to permit a garbage containment in a temporary uh, located on the three existing parking spaces above grade? That's correct. Okay. So you're a unit holder. You know, come up to the mic. The well, let, let's just, it, it might, might, well, okay, we can do it that way, but it might help focus the presentation if we, if you knew your concern in advance. Did you write in? Did you email? Okay, let's have your presentation and then we'll go the official route. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the presentation is not, not much different than what is in the application. We had to close our garbage chutes because our garage is under construction. So we had no way of bringing garbage out. The deck where we normally have our garbage is now a construction site, a locked construction site because we've had to take ramp down and that kind of thing. So in order to accommodate our residents, the board of directors moved the recycling bins and our garbage bins to three spots in our west parking lot above ground, which is accessible for the waste management company to come in and, and take stuff out. So that's why it's there. So it's temporary during the construction period? Yes. And how long is the construction period? We, in, we expect it will be finished by the end of October. Oh, like next month? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you. Questions? Okay. Okay. Ma'am, this is your turn to ask us the questions you wanted. So we need your name and address so we can uh, hear you better. Um, Linda Lozo, L-O-Z-O, -O, Unit 310, 1300 Marlboro Court. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is, um, at the end, if we get this variance, at the end, is our garbage legal? I don't, it's being the problem from the paperwork we received seems to be that it's not covered. That, that's okay, well, we, we, don't, we don't supply legal opinions. Um, that's not our role. We, we make decisions. I think what you're saying is uh, that the way we understand the application is you need to have this garbage enclosure 
but you ha had to decommission it while you're constructing. We, we don't have an enclosure in the original location. Well, there's a garbage containment. I'm not quite sure, you know, it could be semantic of words. It's a garbage containment. M maybe Ms. Kate Mahalovich will have some explanation that for That would us. be excellent. But, but, but before we do that, what exactly is your concern? I don't appreciate it yet. Um, we are asking for the variance because of the new location doesn't meet the zoning law. The temporary location. The temporary meet, location. Yes, during construction. I'm wondering if we actually do get the variance and it expires after the, I've forgotten the, the limit that was in, in the paperwork. Construction period. The construction period. Uh, whether if we move the garbage back to where it was before, whether that will still be in violation. Okay, well, again, we don't answer legal questions, but presumably, wherever it is now, it's in compliance. While it's closed and being uh, renovated, it's out of compliance, and you need this temporary variance to make you comply while you're out of compliance. But let's see what Ms. Behavlish has to say, and then maybe that will help. Thank you. She's much more eloquent than me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the committee and to the resident, uh, staff understanding that the the original location of the garbage containment area, which actually fronts onto White Oaks Boulevard, is ne legal non-compliant based on the current bylaw standards. Due to the renovations that are being done, there was a temporary relocation of that garbage and, uh, containment area to the um, western portion of the property, which would be on the, the lot that would front onto Trafalgar Road and is accessible from Marlborough Court. The variance that's being sought today is to allow for the temporary allowance of that garbage containment to be in a temporary location on the basis that per our condition that it expire by the end of this year uh, on the basis that construction will um, be completed prior to the end of the year. But it will go back to its original location, which would remain as a legal non-compliant state. That will not change. Therefore, it's our view that the garbage where it is originally situated is legally existing there. Can, and it can continue? Correct. Does that help, uh, Ms. Lozak? Again, we're not providing legal opinions. No, we're no, just I'm, trying to... I'm, I'm trying to understand because at one point there was a talk about redoing the garbage when we did the garage. If it is legally okay what we had before we started construction that's all i need to know i think that's what we heard thank you okay anyone else wishing to speak to this matter is there anything you wish to add to, to our app to your application okay thank you so uh, let's take this man to committee who would like to move a recommendation mr mark charlois yeah, thank you mr chair uh, having read the report and visited the the site and, and listened to the uh, comments from uh, uh, from the resident as well as our planner. Um, I believe that, uh, that this particular variance does meet the four tests under the Planning Act. I'm going to put forward a recommendation that it be approved subject to one condition at the minor variance application CAVA 174 2017, I believe. Yes. 17. Uh, expire on December 31st, 2017. Okay. Discussion recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support? No one opposed. Your application is being approved on that temporary basis. Yes, sir. Are you speaking to this application? Yes, please, to do with this. I'm one of the residents that they've You're way too late. I called, I called last call, and we've already dealt with this application. Why, why didn't your hand not go up earlier? It's never a wrong time. Well, uh, I'm not quite sure how we can help you. We made a decision on this now. Perhaps you can at least leave your concerns on the record. It's been recorded. Might as well leave your concerns, but we've already so made... not really allowed to say anything? Uh, well, I'm inviting you to say something, but I don't know how we can help us now that we've really dealt with the application. But I'm inviting you to come down so you, at least your concerns are part of the live stream for whatever value they may add to. Yeah. Well, no, the, the one condition. The one condition. 
There's only one condition. I'm very sorry about this. No, um, no, well, we're sorry that we didn't, uh, but anyways, let's have your name and, and address. My name is Ray Corrigan. I live 1329 White Oaks Boulevard, which is right opposite the driveway to Marlborough Court Garage. Okay. Where they keep the bins. Right. We've always had concern about these bins, where they've been kept. And I have pictures from way back when I come to the council asking for advice. So, so this is the existing bins or the relocated bins? No, this is from where they originally where? were on the site. Right, to where, and so where you're, you're not talking about where they want to put them temporarily, you're talking about where no, they no, were. No, 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 but now they're coming back. And I'm concerned again. Well, and that's my understanding. Uh, and I'm concerned yeah. because the state they, these bins were kept in in the past, and we come to the council to ask advice. Council? You mean like town of We Oakville? actually come to the town hall to ask advice, and the people here told us that we're, our hands are tied. We can't do nothing about the bins where they're kept. What I'm saying is the bin should be kept below ground and brought up on the day they're to be emptied and not stored outside. We used to have positions like this and they're not like it now, so I'm not trying to give you a false impression. This is what we used to have. No, you want to turn it around? I, I, I fully understand what you're saying, but our, like if, if council, don't, let's see the pictures. Because uh, you, what you're trying to demonstrate is well, that these bins. Oh yeah, no. See, look, look up there. Take a look up there. So turn it around, turn it around, and now look up there. There you go. Put all the pictures up. There you go. No, the other way. You had it right. Okay, let's look at those two first. Sir, is that, uh, are those bins full because of uh, construction that's going on, or are they just generally no, full? this was just every day. When, when were those pictures taken? These were taken a few years ago. Okay. And we come to the council about it. Yeah, so I, I'm going to ask you then, um, how can we help? Because what they're asking for is exactly what you've anticipated correctly, is that they're going back there. Well, what we I'm have no power to, to say to relocate them. That's not our role, sir. Well, what, what can we do to get over this and, and having, stay, save, having them put back to the same position as where they all were, were well, always was? Well, uh, I, I don't know, can't, can't but, do but I would suggest, as a recommendation, because we, we don't give legal advice, is uh, I would talk to your local councillor and see if there's anything that they can do under some bylaw, like a property standard bylaw, to ensure that the bins are kept uh, you know, clean and tidy. But as you heard from our planner that's here tonight, is uh, the, the variance that, that's being granted already is to allow for those bins that you showed us to be temporary parked somewhere else while they're undergoing some improvements at the facility. Yes, and then so they're going to come that. back. I understand that. So, so your concerns are quite valid, but it's nothing that we can do as a committee of adjustment. And certainly if council tells you they can't do anything, it's certainly way well, beyond our, our ability to do anything either. I've been told by the council it's a bylaw and we can't do nothing about it. Uh, I, again, I don't know all the, we don't know all the legalities. Uh, and, and, you know, there are, I think you're on the right track. Keep in contact with your councillor. There is an opportunity. You, you saw the representatives here from the Condo Corporation. She heard your concerns loud and clear. Um, and, and uh, you know, hopefully as things progress in the future, the situation improves. Okay. Okay. All right. But thank, thank you. you thank you for registering those complaints. Okay. So we're going to move along uh, to application CAVA uh, 14, 2017 at 518 Statford Drive. And I just encourage the, um, uh, the condo board, the members that were here, as you heard the concerns, and I think uh, looking at those images, there's certainly room for improvement. There must be a reason why that happened, but you should communicate with your neighbors, and I'm sure you're doing that. Yes, Thank you. We, we have actually taken actions to try and keep that area. We've had problems with neighbors actually bringing garbage in. 
Yes. Yeah. Th this is why bins, uh, when they're enclosed and not a site, uh, it's easier to uh, prevent things like that. Anyways, exchange numbers and handshake and see if you can get it resolved. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Graham Barrett, 22 Close Avenue, agent for the owner, 518 Stafford. Okay, is there anyone here that has an interest in application CAVA 14 2017 at 518 Stafford Drive? Okay, um, members, you've done your site visit, you read the staff report, familiar with the application. Sir, is there anything you wish to add to the application? Um, just in conversations with Kate in planning, um, she expressed an interest from the town that we eliminate a faux dormer above uh, the front porch and that would alleviate some of the concerns about the front yard setback being proposed. Um, we're happy to do so. I've had drawings prepared with it removed. Um, if you'd like to uh, see that. Ms. Pavlovich, that's, that, that's the case, a uh, dormer move, did you s well, There used to be a uh, dormer here. I'll show you the original if you'd like. And you've shared this uh, redesign with our planner? I have, yes. Okay. And yes. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee, uh, staff had had conversations with the applicant regarding the architectural feature that was above the porch to mitigate the impact of the dwelling coming closer to the front property line. The applicant has prepared revised plans. Staff have requested a condition in the, uh, in the instance that the committee was not prepared to accept the revised plans this evening, should you wish to approve the application uh, on that basis. Alternatively, the committee could choose to approve the application with the conditions as worded, and the applicant could easily satisfy that one condition by providing revised plans through to the secretary treasurer. Um, if, if it could be done as a condition, perhaps it'd make better sense because our conservation permit is tied to plans from before, so. So the condition would be? To eliminate the dormer. That the front elevation be uh, amended to eliminate the, the north dormer, the, the fourth dormer, how would you name that? Um, suppose dormer on the which side would that be? I guess the west side, southwest, front right. Sure. Is that a living room? Mr. Barrett, someone's whispering for you. Oh. It would be above, yes, above the living room. That's what I thought. It's the cathedral ceiling, right? Right. Is that... That the dormer above the living room be eliminated, is that satisfactory? Mr. Chairman, that would be satisfactory. Alternatively, uh, as revised to remove the dormer above the front porch would equally satisfactory. Okay, dormer above the front porch to be eliminated as a condition. Okay, gotcha. Any discussion on this uh, application? Okay, so we'll take this into committee. There's no one here that has an interesting application and there hasn't been any letters or any uh, other communication. So, member, who would like to move a recommendation on this? Mr. Uh, Charlois. Um, Mr. Chairman, having, you know, read the report, uh, visit the site, listened to the presentation here, and I think I understand the condition that's being recommended. Um, I, uh, I agree with the analysis of, uh, of the town. Uh, I do note that there's, uh, there have been no objections or uh, letters of support from the public. Uh, and I do find that this particular application does meet the four tests on the Planning Act, make a recommendation that it be approved subject to three conditions, that the proposed dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the plans dated June 13, 2017 as submitted, that, the, that a site alteration permit be approved permitting the proposed dwelling and providing for a full preservation of tree number one in brackets silver maple in the arborist report dated February 9, 2016. Uh, a third condition that, that uh, specifically says that the dormer above the front porch shall be removed as part of this application to the satisfaction of the director of planning uh, and further, our standard fourth condition that this uh, uh, this approval will expire within two years if a building permit's not issued. 
Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Charlebois. Is there a discussion on recommendation to approve subject to those four conditions? Mr. Hardcastle? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just going to um, state for the record that uh, I have some um, serious reservations with respect to this uh, variance. Uh, at 4.14 meters, it's very, very close to the uh, street edge. <clears throat> It's significantly in front of the house at 522, and with the configuration on that corner, I've got some serious reservations, and I won't be able to support that motion. Okay, thank you. Any, any other discussion on this matter? Seeing none, okay, the recommendation is to uh, approve the application subject to those four conditions. All those in support? Those in opposition? Mr. Hardcastle. Okay, that application has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The four conditions. And then there was a tree condition. And then the standard condition. Mark, do you have your conditions there written out? All right, we'll give that to Mark, and then he'll, uh, he'll add the fourth condition. Oh, sorry, that last condition? Yes. Okay, so we'll call on application CABA 113-2017 at 435 Sumner Avenue. This is a matter that was deferred from our June 27th, uh, 2017 meeting. Ski season hasn't started yet, sir. Name and address for the record. Michael Barton. I am the agent, MB1 Development Consulting. My okay. address is 1489 Abbey Wood Drive in Oakville. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, I presume uh, everyone that's in the uh, remain in the audience has an interest in the application CABA 113-2017. Can I see a show of hands? Okay. We'll need a presentation, sir. So maybe you should start off by telling us the changes that occurred between the original application and this one. Yes. And uh, we'll start with your five minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity uh, to, to be here. There you go. So what I have here is showing the site plan that came to the original meeting versus the revised site plan. They aren't to the same scale, so I'm not providing it to show that. Um, but I will point out key elements that have yes. changed to the plan. The original is on top? No. If that makes it easier. No, no, it's okay, as yeah. long as I know. So for, uh, I have a table which I'll show in first, and then I'll go back to that. So I've provided this in the revised submission. So what this shows, in the left column are the zoning provisions that apply. There were five zoning provisions that required variances under the original application. The, the next column shows the requirement under the zoning. The third column is what the original proposal was requesting, and then the fourth column is what has been uh, requested under the revision. So under the original application, there was a, re a variance requested for maximum encroachment to the minimum rear yard for access stairs below grade. Under the zoning, you're allowed to have a 1.5 meter encroachment. At, under the original application, we were requesting that that encroachment be 2.9 meters, which resulted in a 4.6 meter distance from the rear lot line. Under the current proposal, we are now providing stairs with a setback of 7.94 meters. So you can see on the map, this location where I'm pointing now is now 7.94. Under the original site plan, we had 4.6. Okay. So that eliminated the variance requirement. Okay. So under the current application, there's no longer a variance required there. Okay. The second row has not changed. This is just due to the site plan as designed. The location of the driveway is less than 15 meters from the intersection. That has not changed. Same with the third uh, row. The minimum flankage yard, okay. which is this location here where it's actually the front entry to the home, but this is considered the flankage yard, um, has not changed. The minimum required under the zoning is 3.5, and the requested is 2.46 meters. Okay. The fourth row 
maximum residential floor area ratio for a detached dwelling with a lot area between 650 meters squared and 742.99 meters squared. Under the zoning is required to be 41% at the maximum. That was, uh, or sorry, that translates into 295 meters squared. Under the original proposal, we were showing a uh, floor area of 340.72, which was 47.35%. Uh, we reduced that to 281, which now brings us down to 39.1. So that eliminates that variance requirement related to floor area ratio. Okay. And then finally, in this location, there is a requirement for a maximum lot coverage of 19% for a dwelling having two stories. That translates into 136.71 meters squared. Originally, we had a, a lot coverage of 250.13 meters squared, which was 34.76. It's being reduced to 214.74 meters squared, which is 29.85. That is made up of a combination of the house and an outdoor amenity space, which includes a covered porch. So the covered porch was provided under both options. You can see it here. So as I noted in the revised submission, the existing lot coverage today on the property is 20.5%. That is shown here by this dotted line. So the house is generally in the same location, but, but slightly larger uh, than the to the existing location. The house without the covered porch would have a lot coverage 24.94%. 24.94%, so just under 25, I'll say 25% to be okay. rounded. And the existing is 20.5, you said? 20.5. The covered porch increases the lot coverage. It has 4.9% lot coverage. That's what brings it up to the 29.85% requested. The main reason for this request, if I show the flankage elevation, which is if you're looking at the property from Sumner Ave, is that there is a significant grade differential as you move towards the rear of the property, just to be looking uh, west, standing in front of the building, it drops off greatly. So this area becomes difficult to use as an outdoor amenity area due to the grade change. So this outdoor covered patio area is is really going to function as an outdoor amenity space for the dwelling and that is what increases the lot coverage over 25%. Okay. So in... We'll give you another oh, minute to finish sure. up your thoughts. I'll move through quickly on this. When we were here under the, on June 27th and discussed this application and asked for the deferral, the main issues that we had heard, uh, staff had recommended approval of three of the variances. They had re recommended refusal of the lot coverage variance and the floor area ratio variance. We have now eliminated the floor area ratio variance and significantly reduced the lot coverage. We are also providing side yards and rear yards that are, that are uh, or sorry, rear yard and then the yard along Gloucester, which is significantly larger than required. I mean, doing so, we feel as though the intent of the zoning bylaw of 19% lot coverage is to ensure that you don't have overbuilding on the property and that character uh, of the neighborhood is maintained with consideration for 25% being permitted on the opposite, opposite side of Gloucester. Uh, most of the concerns that we heard were the size of the dwelling that was proposed in terms of lot coverage and floor area ratio. It's our opinion that we have now addressed those concerns and that the four tests are met, and I will go through that quickly. And in doing that, I will provide just the elevation here on the front one more time. It is our opinion that the proposal represents a reasonable, reasonable intensification of the subject property in a manner that is compatible with the character and quality of the existing neighborhood. The proposed dwelling has a high level of architectural design 
and has also taken into consideration uh, open space considerations, setbacks, and overall built form, particularly floor area ratio. The maximum lot coverage provisions have been set in place to uh, control the scale and massing of the structures in the community. And given the existing character on Gloucester, Watson, and Sumner, also this being a corner lot with a unique orientation, um, it's our opinion that the proposal represents uh, the level of uh, attention to design and compatibility envisioned under the official plan. Uh, it's our opinion that, also our opinion that the proposal is consistent with the mission statement and guiding principles of the Livable Oakville plan. In terms of the zoning bylaw, it is our opinion that the proposal is in keeping with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw in providing considerable setbacks. Uh, we are not asking for variances on such things as height on the building. It really comes down to that lot coverage piece. Um, in providing the main dwelling at being under 25%, which is adjacent to a 25% lot coverage area on the other side of Gloucester, that we feel that the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw is maintained. The proposal will also result in a significant improvement of the built form on the property today. The building has been vacant for a significant period of time, and the building is in need of significant repair if it was to be maintained in its current condition. It's also not representative of the character of the current neighborhood. So for that reason, we feel that it's desirable for the use and development of the land to see this proposal move forward. Finally, given the reductions in the variances requested, the number and the intensity of those variances, we feel the variances that remain are minor in nature relative to the zoning bylaw. And for that reason, the four tests have been met. And we are in agreement with the staff report that now recommends approval of the variances requested. Thank you, sir. Any questions of, uh, at the moment? Yes, Mr. Mr. Charlebois. You can leave that can you, up. Yeah, can you leave that up? Sure. Um, just because I know that this is going to uh, be a, a animated discussion here. Uh, one thing that you did, you know, you, you talked a little bit about the size of the building, and oh, I've got a question about that. But could you explain to me on the second variance, just for everybody here, Bear with me. The second variance, which was the minimum flankage yard from 3.5 to 2.46. Can you, can you just explain what that is for everyone here? Sure. So as I mentioned, that hasn't changed uh, from the original proposal. That is located in this location right here, which many people may feel is the front yard. Um, this is technically the front yard along Gloucester, so this becomes a flankage yard because it is a corner lot. Given that the, the width of the lot, which is in character with the neighborhood, it results in a challenge to orient the house towards Sumner and, and also try to achieve uh, a flankage yard that meets that requirement while also trying to provide the maximum here. So it really becomes challenging. And so that in, that situ in this situation, the intent is to provide it um, on either side of the property and, and also with the the overall massing of the home. So it, it does, it's just the challenge here of trying to find another meter. It's just not feasible with the floor plan of the house to try and you'd be squeezing the house so narrow that it wouldn't work. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of lead you in this thing here because there's, there's a better answer. Um, <laughs> how much of the building is at 3.5 and how much of the building is not okay. at 3.5? Yeah, and it is, it is at this location right here where we're asking for the squeeze. So it's where you have these uh, these bump out locations. In terms of, it, it's hard to say percentage wise. As you get to here, at this location here, you're providing 3.5 meters. You can see right here, right. at this facade where you're running the line right along. So it's where you have the bump out here, here, and here. So it's just a, it's, it's just a couple of bumps that yes. come out. Okay. My next question is is again with respect to the driveway, and I know you're, you're going to say that that was there before, but why couldn't you locate the driveway 15 meters away? What stopped you from doing it in terms of design? Uh, it really comes down to the optimal use on the site. If you were to try and move the driveway, looking at flipping the house, uh, you would then be putting the driveway and garage towards this challenging grading area. Uh, if you were to try and keep this current configuration as you pushed it this way to get it further from the intersection, you would then be getting closer to the rear yard is here as well. So uh, in terms of a design, and because this is a corner lot where you're moving to the corner here, you don't have an immediate neighbor as well. The impact of having the driveway here versus closer to this property, um, and then also dealing with the grading challenges, it's felt like this was the 
optimal location with those considerations in mind. And then, as you mentioned, relatively close to the current location and operation today. Okay. And my third question is with res respect to that covered porch. Am I correct in, in assuming that if you don't cover the porch, then it wouldn't count as coverage? That's correct, yes. So it's just the fact it has a roof over it. Yes, it's trying to provide some, um, not tw uh, 365 day use, but you know during rain, you know just some sort of a sheltered location. All right, thank you. Any further questions, Mr. Martin? See none. Okay, sir, have a yep. seat, and um, we'll start. Whoever wants to come down first, uh, I'm assuming to the extent possible, you've uh, those that have uh, a concern. First, let's just ask so we can take things in sequence. Is anyone here in support? Are you the homeowner? Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's duly noted. Okay, so those are in opposition. Um, is there an elected spokesperson or um, who would like to start first? Sir? Why don't we start with you and then uh, others may join to add any new information, that's I'm, fine. I'm sure they will, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Your name and address for the record, sir. Yes. <clears throat> My name is, <coughs> excuse me, is this water? May I help? I don't know how long it's been there, but it probably is water. <laughs> we take no responsibility for no. its content. My name is John Canham. <coughs> I live better. across, sorry. That sounds better. <coughs> My name is John Canham. I live across the street at 430 Sumner Avenue. I'm a retired urban planner, and I've lived there for 42 years. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I hope you'll indulge me because I'm going to be speaking on behalf of another gentleman who handed me something just before he left. As you can see, it's a very short document, so I know you're conscious of time. We all are. His article will probably take 35 seconds. Mine might take three and a half minutes. So... Um, can you hear me all right? Yes. Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Barton had taken heed of your good advice on June the 27th and discussed the revised proposal of 435 Sumner with the residents, I'm sure this whole matter could have been resolved. No such meeting was forthcoming. The community believes, as evidenced by the 18 letters you've received in opposition, that the present lot coverage request of 29.85% is still not in keeping with the very distinct character of our neighborhood. Our distinct character is one of which the vast majority of two-story homes have lot coverages of less than applicant's home. This is where I am. What I've tried to do, to the best of our knowledge, we monitor our, our, we monitor our area exceptionally well, We're very scrupulous as to what happens in our area, and everybody sitting behind me could tell you the square footage of their, and the color of their tiles in the bathroom. That's how close we, we monitor the area, and I know four of you gentlemen and ladies, one of, four of you came and made a site visit on Friday. <coughs> What you see around here are two-story buildings with their lot coverages. So going clockwise at 177, you've got 25.5.7, 19 percent, 23.9 percent, 21 percent, 19 percent, 24.75, 19 percent. I'm at 25. They're at 22. They're at 25. The, the common theme here the lot coverage, the distinctive character is 25%, if not a lot. All in the same zone category, right? I'm sorry? These are all in the same zone category? They're all in the special zone 10. On right, this okay. side of the road, okay. That's you've a got the other zone, right? And the maximum there was reduced from 30% to 25 Obviously, council was sending a message, lower is better, not higher. So I better so, stick so to So what my was, just sorry to interrupt you, but what was the coverage under the old bylaw for this area. Was it 19%? Of, of our area here? Yes. Yeah, that coverage was put in place. The staff, first staff report said 1984. The second staff report says 1986. 
Talking with Joe Nethery, who wrote this report, he said it's 1994. It's been in place 33 years. So the 19%? The, the 19%. 19 for two stories, 22 for one and a half, 25 for lot coverage for a bungalow. So it's been 19% since 1994. For 33 years, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I only ask because. No, no, I'm glad you asked the question. Because, because not a lot you're, of people you're at 25%. That. That. I'm sorry? You're at 25%. Did you predate the bylaw? My house was built in 69 when the bylaw allowed 29%. 29%. Yeah, okay, in 1969. Gotcha. That's, that's why in I asked. In 84, it was down. So I'll, I'll come to this. I okay. had to come for a minor variance to enclose a porch. But I'm ahead of myself. Okay. If I can go back to my notes, otherwise I'll be speaking for No, no, I will give you all the time. It's just that Interrupt me whenever you like, Mr. Chairman. No, no, that's fine. Okay, so that's drawing number one. What I'd like to do is address some of the comments in the staff report that's in your possession. The report refers to revisions being made since the first application, and the revisions have been noted. We all recognize those revisions. However, the starting point for negotiating an appropriate lot coverage in this very old, sensitive, stable area should be 19, not 30. 4.76, the original application could have been for 50% lot coverage, and then the argument would be we've dropped 20. So I urge you to consider this application in, the, in its present context and really forget what was before you on the 27th. The staff opinion regarding lot coverage within the Brantwood area has not been confirmed in this report. We have not seen any evidence of the prevailing lot coverages in the Brantwood area, because we don't know what that area is, or any statistical anal analysis to substantiate staff's conclusion that a lot coverage of 29.85 is appropriate for the area. This is the area we're looking at. You can look at a lot larger area, that's the application, there's Brantwood. What's the Brantwood area? That much? This much? This much? This much? There's no definition. The report claims that increases have ranged from 2.7, and this is a very critical issue. Claims that increases, and this is found in the staff report on page three, but two inches down. The report claims that increases have ranged from 2.7 to 10% above the bylaw requirement of 19 in this particular block. If this is correct, then applying this to the bylaw requirement of 19%, that means that the range of lot coverages would go from 19.5 to 20.10. Uh, 20.9, not 21.7 to 29.4, which is what the staff say it is. As a matter of fact, I'd like somebody to tell me where 29.4 uh, is. Well, I, I can give you some simple math. Uh, the, if the base lot coverage is 90% and they're adding 10.4, it becomes 29.4. If the base is 19% no, no, no. and you add 2.7. percent of 19. No. And 10.7. No, no. Uh, but I understand your confusion. They're just adding 2.7 to 19. So that gives you 21.7. So it's just a simple mathematical equation. Yeah, I know. And, I, and we've worked it out. And we're saying the range is gr is. A lot smaller. 2.7% of 19%. Yes, yes, 0.5. And you add yeah, 0.5 to 19, that's you get 19.5. That's not what they're doing here. Um, anyway, the point is 29.85% is 50% more than what the bylaw requires. In our view, that is significantly greater than what the town's own definition of minor is in this pamphlet that the town came out with only last year, they clearly say, what is a minor variance? A small variation from the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Small. Is 50% small? That's the question I guess you that's, guys have to answer. <laughs> I hope that's a rhetorical question because you introduce yourself as, a, as a, someone with some planning expertise, minor. 
can mean in some instances a t total elimination of a zoning standard. Cole's Bookstore in the city of Toronto had zero loading. I'm sorry, I didn't hear half of what you said. Um, for one other drawing I'd like to put up, if I may. The report talks about significant change in grade in the rear yard am am amenity space. The grade change is minor and only affects the rear 27 feet. This portion back here, I've measured it umpteen times. It's 27 feet here, it probably goes down to 25. The grade starts, the difference between this point and this point is roughly four feet. And then from this point right up to the driveway, it's probably 18 inches, a very, very slight grade. I can't buy the argument that the lot, the characteristics, the topography are so, um, difficult that somebody can't build a reasonable house on it at 25%. My neighbor, Mr. Ranieri, is going to be speaking about his property here, but just for the record, and I have to address it since the staff addresses it in its report, <clears throat> they talk about this development having an application approved by, man, uh, by the uh, mine of variance in 2004 of 32.4%. That building existed in 1955 as a bungalow at 30% lot coverage, which is what the bylaw allowed. In order for him to go to a story and a half, he had to apply from the zoning bylaw in place then at 22. So he's got a legal non-conforming coverage of 30%. So he really barely, what he got was 2.4% because he was going to a one and a half story. That is not a two story building. My property here, I had to, believe it or not, come to this committee for a minor variance because I cover 25% of the lot. My wife and I thought it'd be a good idea if we had a vestibule, 40 square feet, let's do it underneath the porch. No, you can't. If you're going to disfigure the porch and give it a gable, which is what we wanted, we had to come to the committee. No lot coverage required at all. And reference is made to my figure of 25%. Why, I don't know, other than it does fit in the general ambit of the lot coverages around here. Okay, um, I will just conclude by saying I don't think this application does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. I know the official plan very well, and if you want, I can quote you chap and chapter and verse of the sections that relate to the maintenance and protection of older established areas, but I won't do that. I know the zoning bylaw very well. The intent was 19%. Council reinstated that intent in 2013 after two years of public hearings. So that's been in place for 33 years. The design guidelines stress privacy, shadowing, and amenities that should be looked after. In my view, this does not represent good planning. This is not a minor matter. It doesn't meet the four tests. So those are my observations, Mr. Chairman. I would now like to read Eric Weiler's comments, if I may. Yes, please. Eric lives here in a one and a half story house. I just reset the clock second, third time for you, so. Third time? Third time. Well, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt you. you. You interrupted me a lot, Mr. Chairman. I so just did it without even polling my committee members. Tab, I wanted I guess, to eh? give you all the opportunity. All right. Here's what Eric says. Okay. This is <coughs> Eric's time. Okay. I'm going to watch myself this time. It's okay. Referring to the fact that the applicant reduced his request from 34.76 to 29.85, quote, uh, implying a concession is irrelevant, as the original 34.76 is a number with no credibility for comparative pur purposes. Similarly, similarly, focusing on one outlier data point of 32.4, I guess he's referring to 420 Sumner, that was granted to 430 somebody in 2004 is incorrect. Is incorrect thinking when surrounded by many data points of 25% more, more or less. The focus should be on the deviation from the norm, which is about 25, not on the outlier. Otherwise, you just create two outliers, 
thereby giving them greater credibility in the future and increasing the possibility of future unintended co co consequences. At the end of their report, staff report, they say, and I quote, it is staff's opinion that the requested increases in lot coverage is consistent with the lot coverages found in the Brantwood area and more specifically within the immediate area. Where do, where, where, where do I see 29 around here? I don't. There is nothing more, this is nothing more than an unsubstan unsubstantiated opinion built on faulty logic as the basis for their conclusion is faulty. It is critical that the proper comparison be made the argument must be for, uh, focused on the 25% norm. Under three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, any questions? If you don't mind, sir, uh, two questions. Um, you know, to, to be fair to the applicant, what, what you've heard him say is that, uh, that his building is roughly about 25%, but because he wants to cover in the porch, uh, it's going to increase to 29. Let's just assume that that statement is correct for, for here. I just wanted to get your opinion, uh, because you seem to know this area here, is, you know, if other people in the area decided that, you know, because I saw the vast majority of, of buildings seem to be at 22 to 25 anyway, which is in the range of, of what the building size, if, if they wanted to enclose their porches, would you feel the same way? Yes, because I think there's a principle at stake here. The official plan has stated a policy in very clear language. The zoning bylaw had an opportunity to implement right. that to the language of the policy, and it did. No, I, I, think ju I just wanted, I wanted okay. your opinion. Your opinion is that, that, that it's, it's the math that counts. The other one is uh, that I reacted to, and I hadn't seen it in any of the comments, either from staff or whatever, is, is about the grading change. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to, you, you said you paced it many times. So you're saying that that porch area that, that they show as being an amenity to, because of the grading change, is actually not being constructed over the sloping lands. That's right. Hmm. For all intents and purposes, it's flat land. The grade from here to here, going up, is probably about 18 inches. And I, it's, I'm exaggerating. It could be 14 inches. Because okay. I've counted the bricks there. I've known these people, not the current owners, but the former owners, all of them, and I know that house backwards. No, no, the I, I, land is this much. I just hadn't seen, I hadn't seen that information being presented well, before, I and I think it is material. Have, that's why I provided it for you. Okay, thank you. Because I know some of you were out on the site walking, and I didn't want to interrupt your pleasant walk on Sunday. I figured, let you see what it is you see. Well, you said Friday. Sorry? Some of them, some of us went on Sunday. Were you there, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I was, sir. Okay. My yes, camera I didn't pick you up. <laughs> okay. Any Eyes more questions? Uh, further questions? So just uh, picking up Mr. Charlevoix's question, um, and, and as a planner, sir, you'll appreciate that often. What determines a minor variance goes to the issue of what is the impact of the variance being requested. Uh, your, your evidence shows that the effective coverage in the area is around 25% and the house without the porch is 24.9%. I just wanted to get clarification. It is If the porch wasn't covered and it was 25%, would your um, concerns be alleviated? And if not, what uh, impact do you see that the covered porch adds compared to the exact same house without a covered porch? If the uh, speaking for myself on a matter of principle and looking at what's in the neighborhood, if the roof did not have a porch, I per personally it wouldn't be adversely affected. I'd have to ask these other 25 people behind me what their views were, because this is just one, one person's view, and, but it's an important view because I live across the street. So I, just to follow up on some of this, theme, it seems like 
the concerns are concentrated on, it seems like the concerns are focused on coverage. Absolutely. So the flankage is not an issue, the driveway is not an issue. Others might be speaking to that. Sure. I'm not speaking from your, no, I'm, I'm talking about your perspective and right. the perspective of your neighbor at uh, 220, who you read the letter into the record. Now, it seems from your, uh, from your evidence that council knew that most of the structures here were built in 69 when it was a 30% coverage, you said, it's more than 19. And you oh, were many at 19, but a lot. But and you were and you were persuasive in convincing council that they should go to a lower coverage standard, knowing full well that a lot of the buildings here didn't comply with a lower 19% standard. Even yours, even your neighbors to the west, and there's variances that were granted that you know brought it up to the 2025. And yet you're saying today that the the de facto standard is ignore the zoning bylaw, the intent, but the de facto standard is 25%. That's what you should be adjusting I, your variance from. I just find that hard to understand. You know, if the intent is 19, let's call it 19, not well, a de facto I agree. 25. If the, if, <clears throat> let's face it, if we didn't have a committee of adjustments, the zoning bylaw stands at 19. No appeal, dead, end of story. Right. Right? So, Correct. yes, I would agree and with no one, you. If no you want to be hard-lining no about it, it should be 19%. But, but I'm just but, going from your evidence. Your evidence was that uh, we should assess this on a 25% coverage standard. Because circumstances have changed over the years, not because of me, but because the Committee of Adjustment giving variances up to 25, 21.3, 22.7, it creeps up. The chairman of the Residents Association in 2004 wrote to Anne Malvela a letter and said, I can foresee in the years 2010, the norm will be 29%. Because the committee's decisions back then, I don't think you were on it then, Mr. Chairman, but they will be increased regularly. And right. eventually, the Residents Association got on board and said, wait a minute, enough is enough. No, but I, I understand that. And, and things evolve, right? And things evolve, yes. Bylaws go 19, sometimes they go 30, yeah, you know, yeah. and we've seen just in this small pocket. Right, right. It's, it's gone all over the place. But what, what right. I'm trying to focus on is the fact that somehow council was persuaded to go to a 19% intent, notwithstanding that, uh, you're encouraging us to look at it as a 25% standard, assess it well, on a 25% standard, because that's what seems to be the prevailing. Exactly, that's what's happening here, so maybe council has All to right. take another look at it. But right now, since it's not taking a look at it, the committee is forced to look at 19, 22, and 25. Well, no, no, I, well, I, I, I know what you're saying, yeah. but, but what you've encouraged us through your evidence, not our evidence, your evidence is, Ignore the 19, look at it at 25%. I'm not saying that. And that's that. what, these numbers, that's what saying, these numbers show. No, Mr. Chairman. I'm saying 19% I'm saying is the bylaw. What's happened and evolved since 1969 is this. App applications were made after 1984, and it started creeping up. I had nothing, you know, I so was employed in the government. And this, know, and this goes to the question asked by my colleagues. Sorry? And this goes to the question asked by my colleagues. It seems that what's driving up the coverage here is a covered porch. And that uh, would appear to be the case, yes. Yeah, so if the covered porch was to be removed, it would be under the 25%, which it, seems it, to it be would. the prevailing coverage in the neighborhood. It would, or else the, the, the house is, is scaled back Sure. and include the covered porch, but the covered porch is not excluded from the lot coverage in the no, zoning bylaw. No, that's, that's exactly what we just okay. agreed to. So yeah. you could do that, but you could also shave off some of the building back there. Oh, for sure. There's different ways to go at it. That's my point. My point was if we'd had an earlier meeting and had some conversation about this, especially with this person who is not around, away on vacation, and somebody will speak to that, we could have had some amicable solution resolved, uh, be resolved on this issue, but we... So would that be 19% or 25%? I'm sorry? Would that be 19% coverage or 25% well, coverage? Well, I would start at 29, but I'm tempering my <laughs> remarks given what's evolved. I'm not that unrealistic, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions arising from those questions? Mr. Charlevoix and uh, uh, Sherry? I have one question. 
I, I, I realize what you're, what you're saying in terms of the facts and, and the, the figures that are predominantly governing this area. However, my question to you is, without the covered porch, the applicant would be at 24.94%. So, and that would be in, within the same lot coverage as all the adjacent homes. And since it's a backyard amenity space, there's no negative impact on the facade or on how the house looks from, you, you can't really see that extra 5%. I mean, if it wasn't covered and it was just a porch, it would still be maintained as such. The house would look the same way, uh, everything would be maintained in the same way. The only difference would be that that porch would still exist without a cover on it. So there's no real difference from what you're proclaiming is the dominant figure that governs that area. If you remove a porch, there's no porch, there's a deck. And what we're saying Regardless, it's a deck. It's a yeah, it's an yeah, outside yeah. amenity space. The and only the difference is it has a roof line. Okay, I want to give these people an opportunity to speak too. Actually. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. By now, Mr. Chairman. We're we're going to be here until we finish. So don't worry about All that. Right. Where everyone's going to get an opportunity to speak to us. Did you finish your question? You're done. Okay. Did you finish your response? I think I did. Okay. Any further questions of Mr. Cannon? Okay, thank you for your time, sir. Appreciate it. And thank can you leave that letter with us? Pardon? Can you leave that letter with us? The one that you read into the record. And your diagrams there. And you had some diagrams. Oh, these are expensive diagrams. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can keep that. Keep that. Good luck where they came from. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so uh, who would like to approach the committee next? Hey there, my name is Santo Ranieri, and I live at 420 Summoner Avenue. Just Sorry, what, what's the number, sir? Can you speak louder in that thing? 420. 420 Summoner? Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to make it succinct because uh, John, my neighbor, uh, uh, touched on a lot of these points, but I just want to reiterate some of these. Just uh, the two are more objective points of referring to the report. I do want to uh, highlight that it is a one-and-a-half story, not a two-story home. And again, I want to uh, refer to the historical context. Uh, I did buy the house back in 2000. Uh, the original house, which was built circa 1955, uh, we decided to uh, ask for a, um, a variance. Uh, the legal non-conforming limit at that time was 30% lot coverage when it was built. We did get approval for 32.4%, and we ended up scaling back the living room. It's about 31.5% was the final, um, final number. Now, you may ask, why, how did we get that approved? Well, a lot of it had to do with being transparent and collaborating with the neighbors and having a dialogue and uh, letting them know what we were doing. And we did get their support. And, uh, I, and as a result, we were able to enjoy our lovely home. And the last point on the, um, on the lot coverage, uh, you know, if this application is approved, it will definitely set a precedent. We can argue whether a porch, in my mind, a porch is not the same as a same as a deck. <laughs> uh, there is a differentiation in my mind. There is a roof. So it does have an impact in terms of the surrounding neighborhood, uh, especially if you live there and you have to look at it every day. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that is my final point. It is precedent. And if someone comes along with the sa exact same situation where they want to put uh, uh, a roof over a um, uh, covered porch, then, uh, you know, will that be accepted by the council going forward? Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions? Okay. Yes, Mr. Hardcast. Just briefly, you spoke to there being an impact. Can you articulate in more detail what the impact of a roof over uh, a deck versus just a deck on its own would be from your viewpoint? Visual. Uh, how so? It's just visual. I mean, there's a roof. So it would there's look a roof or not a roof. I mean, would, is there a roof or not a roof? It would look different or, you know, the concept of a Okay, just different. It's visual. <laughs> just, uh, just being different. Okay. A roof being there or not being there is, to me, is a differentiating factor. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, who else would like to speak to the committee? Come on down, sir. Can I, show, uh, can I see a show of hands who else uh, would like to speak to the committee? Okay. Now, we're not going to repeat the same points, right? No, I, um, I'll be extremely brief. Um, my name is Gary Love, and I live at uh, 163 Watson Avenue. Uh, my wife, uh, who's the owner of the property, uh, submitted a letter of opposition uh, to the variance uh, request. Um, simple point I want to make is that the issue for me is massing. It's lot coverage. This is the front of the house on Sumner. This is our view on Sumner. That porch is not at the rear of the house. That porch is in effect the way the house is designed, will be visible from Sumner, and it creates excessive mass that, in my opinion, is not in character with the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Love, any questions? Okay. Okay, who else? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Can you hear me? My name is Linda Wilson, and I live with my husband at 168 Gloucester, which is the house directly across from 435 Sumner. I'm here tonight not to speak on my behalf, but to speak on behalf of neighbors who are directly north of 435 Sumner at 178 Gloucester, and they are Linda and Hugh Powell, who unfortunately are out of the country at the moment and could not be here. So they've asked me to come and read a message on their behalf, and I want to stress that I'm not here to answer questions on their behalf. I'm strictly here to read their message. Okay? So, dear members of the com Pardon me? No. Very brief. I can, whatever. Dear members of the Committee of Adjustment, we are very disappointed that we cannot be with you today. It is ironic that after standing vacant for 16 months, an application for variance on 435 Sumner is before the COA on the date that we booked to travel out of the country. Because we knew that we would not be attending this meeting, we submitted a second very detailed letter to the COA outlining all of our concerns. We would like to highlight three main issues. The new drawing shows the dwelling being moved one meter to the east. We understand that this is allowed. However, this two-story massing will cast a shadow on our presently sunny front porch and our two dining room windows. Is this resultant shadowing on our home really necessary now that the lot coverage of the proposed home has been reduced, resulting in more usable land on the west side? Number two, Michael Barton's Barton's report states that the covered porch will make up for the, quote, poor amenity space on the west end of the property. There will, be, uh, there will not be poor amenity space if the swale of the 150-foot property matches our property as indicated in the drawings. Number three, we are, however, concerned about the owner changing the swale of 435 Sumner and the west end being dug out to accommodate a walkout from the lower level. In the 17 years that we've lived at 178 Gloucester, we have never seen the swale adjusted in any lot in our area. This may, ca may cause shifting of our home and create future water problems. One year ago, the rebuilt house to the north of us at 182 Gloucester required three 25-foot deep shoring posts to secure out our two properties from shifting as our homes are only 12 feet apart. Are we heading in the same direction with this new build? We expect the town engineers to protect us. We trust that the COA will deny this application and ask the owner to again adapt this 57% over bylaw lot coverage dwelling to closer conform with the zoning bylaws in our area. We also recommend that the owner or architect discuss the third drawing with the immediate neighbors so that the next COA application will be the last. Thank you. You. Can you leave that uh, with us? Okay, thank you. So we won't be asking any questions. Uh, who else would like to speak to the committee? Sir? Thank you. Um, my name is Doug McCurgan. And um, 
I'm a representative of the local residents association, um, Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association. I'm not a neighbor, I live on, Tra on Trafalgar Road. But we need an address. Hmm? We need an address. 312 Trafalgar Road. Okay. Um, I guess uh, uh, I'd like to say three things. Um, one is, um, while I'm um, speaking on behalf of the TCRA in opposition of the uh, um, application, I uh, congratulate the um, architect on the design. I think the design, I think he's right in saying it's a damp site better than what's there right now. Um, um, I also think that it's um, um, a very tricky job that you've got right now with this particular application. Um, it, it, the, for me and for our association, the issue is defense of the bylaw. The bylaw calls for 19% lot coverage, um, and we just cannot get our minds around a, m a more than half as much again um, request or variance request, variance application being considered uh, um, as minor. So uh, I have a letter that I'd like to read into the record. Um, it's to the, to the Oakville Committee of Adjustment. Um, the Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association recommends rejection of this application. The lot coverage requested would be more than half again that allowed by the current zoning. Uh, current zoning. This cannot be considered to be a minor variance. It would set a very undesirable precedent in our stable and established neighborhood. It would also call into question the authority of the Oakville zoning bylaw. And I know that other people have, have made the same point. I just want to go back to two things that people have said. Um, the letter that John read out from his neighbor Eric made the point that um, when you compare a variance application with the existing um, immediate existing neighborhood or, or even the, uh, the, the general vicinity, um, rather than to the zoning requirement, um, you get some kind of accidental incremental creep from the original zoning limitations. And, um, and that's definitely one of our concerns. This, if approved, would set a precedent and sometime in the future, someone would refer, refer to this lot coverage as being part of the reference properties close by and we get further creep. Um, and I'm not here to defend the 19%. I'm just here to say somehow that was arrived at through a, a respectable process of council deliberations, planners' deliberations, public consultation. And if we don't adhere it, we don't defend it, what the hell's it for? Um, the other thing I'd like to say is uh, um, um, speaking to Ms. McHale's question about the porch, um, visually that is part of the building. A deck isn't part of the building. And there is nothing to stop some owner in the future um, putting uh, storm windows around that it's still a porch, a covered porch, and you can predict that sometime down the road that'll become a furnished room as part of the house. Okay, thank you for your submission, sir. Is there any questions? See none, thank you. Uh, who else would like to speak to the committee? Yes, please, we'll, we'll keep that.
Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Charlie Stepick. I'm from 177 Watson Avenue. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm sure some of you might recognize me. I've been here in front of this committee many a times as a builder. I can appreciate the challenges that uh, the current owner is going through in all this. Um, I have sold my property directly behind uh, the current property we're discussing, and I feel it's my obligation on behalf of the, put the new owners, the up-and-coming owners, uh, for me to just give my opinion on what's happening here and sort of to be their spokesman. Um, I feel that this application is not minor. One main reason is the increase in coverage combined with what isn't part of coverage but is still hardscaping, the back patio outside the covered porch, the driveway, take, taking up more of the lot, which is going to be the biggest challenge um, uh, with the water. And he is taking for granted that all that water is going to be coming to 177, which I feel it's unfair for me to sell the property and leave the property and let the new owners you know, deal with this without knowing um, what has happened prior to it. So that is why I'm here. I feel that uh, the coverage over 19% will uh, be uh, detrimental to my lot, 177, which I close uh, with the new owners on uh, October 20th. And uh, I do have two catch basins in the back, and I realize this has nothing to do with the committee. It's to do with the engineering department, the grading department. Right. They might deal with it, they might not, but I still think that uh, the coverage does uh, take up too much uh, of the landscape. There's less softscape and more hardscape, so meet, which means more water coming to the property, um, possibly to the northern property, for sure to the western property, which is mine, and uh, would probably have a, 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 you know, a lot so, of... So you, you said you, you built the structure on this property and you're selling it? I sold. Oh, you sold it. Yeah. And what's the, what's the coverage on that one? 25. 25. Yeah, 25 and a bit. I was here in front of this committee probably about eight years ago. For yeah. That. yeah. And I was dealing with the same people that Mr. Kerr is dealing with, my neighbors, and uh, bridge under the water. So they are great right. people. They're, uh, you know, they, they love their, their neighborhood. And so if you were to take passionate. a guess, because you're a builder, if you were to take a guess, and I was to tell you, you know, put your finger approximately where the 90% would be for this building. Where, where would you place your finger? Uh, where would I place it if I would to move that building? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like, start from the garage side and go over, and then stop at approximately the location you think 19% would be. Middle of the chimney. Uh, can you just point there? I just I'm a visual person. Okay. So if, from the there to the middle of the chimney would be about 19%. I would, I would guesstimate this would be 19% coverage. Okay. Professional guess. Well, well Professional you're a builder. Guess. That's why I asked. Yeah. You're the first person that had the opportunity to ask that question. So the other, the other addition would be the 10%, basically. Yeah. Okay. I, I put it somewhere differently. So we'll ask. Uh, you may very well be right. Well, no, I'm just thinking 19%, uh, uh, double is 38 so, uh, you know, so if you look at a, a third, a third, and a third, you know, third, third, yeah, maybe around there. Okay. I just, you had your chance, sir. Uh, so anyways, thank you. I just wanted to get that perspective because uh, it, it sort of tells me what we're looking at uh, beyond the 19, and it could be totally off, but we'll ask the applicant to okay. sort of give us their best guess as well. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Who else thank would like to speak to the committee? Okay, yes. Good evening. Uh, my name's Carolyn McMinn. I live at 177 Gloucester Avenue, which is actually directly in front of 435 Sumner. Right. The one comment I would like to make about the covered porch is our neighbours on the north on Gloucester at number 182, when they got their approval for their renovation and extension, they were forced to have their covered porch included in the 24.97% that was actually approved uh, in the end for the size of their property. So if that precedent has been set, and that is actually what the rules state, 
why are we having this abusive process where we're now trying to separate the covered porch as not being a living area or not being you know, under the roof line? Um, why are we separating that from the actual rest of the lot coverage? I'm, I'm not quite sure what the 182 was. Do you have the decision here? Uh, well, it's, it's been built. You've got the, have you got the, the picture that John Canham gave you before of the, where you had all the different lot coverages? That actually shows you that their lot, their lot coverage is... No, no, but I was asking, uh, I don't know, I don't have the decision for that. Oh, well, not, neither do I, but I know for a fact that they were, they were forced to include their covered porch as part of that footprint. Well, I think this is what's happening here too, if I'm not mistaken. Except that you were trying to, uh, you were trying to change that before and say, well, the, the dwelling itself is 24 point whatever no, percent. No, 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 I, I then think... The, and then the covered porch is separate from that. That's, that's the extra 5% that's bringing it to 29%. No, maybe, um, maybe Mr. Charlebois will speak to this, but uh, okay. he's ready to... I th okay, go yeah. ahead, Mr. Charlebois. Yeah. I think you're going to correct uh, where you were going with that question. No, no, uh, no, you're, you're probably right. No, it could be construed that way, but that wasn't the intent. Uh, the intent is that you've got two people here. You've got an applicant making an application, and you've got people objecting to it. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give equal weight either way. Yep. The fact that I make a comment like that doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm just All trying right. to... You know, that was what he was trying to draw attention to, and I'm trying to take that and ask the, the other mm -hmm. residents, if that was the case, uh, how would you feel about it? You know, is, okay. is that a valid I just felt argument like or the, not? That what you were actually stating was that, well, let's just ignore the covered porch as being part of the living area because it's actually, you no. know, if it was a deck, No, no, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'd just, just like to point out that... Some, sometimes people, when they see that and, they, and mm -hmm. they think about it, they say, you know what, you're actually right, I, I don't really mind. Uh, now that I understand it yeah. from that perspective or whatever, that's all, right. all. So, yeah, so I just wanted to, to okay. make the point that the neighbours had actually been forced to include their covered porch yes. as part of their footprint. And that's exactly the way it's, Great. Thank it's you. calculated, yeah. Any further questions? See none. Okay, sir, we'll invite you back. I'm going to invite you to set up because I have to go for a quick break. Sure. Okay. So don't, don't say anything yet until I return. Thank you. Um, yes, I'd be happy to address some of the questions and concerns that were raised. First question about where you asked for about 19% would be. Ah, I think a good guide is on this plan. The site plan provides a dotted line of the existing house. Right. That's 20.5% today. It would give you a rough idea of what the footprint of 20.5% looks like if you were to slide that around. Um, it is difficult to you know, look at the elevation and say it would be to this point or whatever. Um, but it does give you that context. So you can see that the dotted line comes out over the proposed covered porch area. So if you were sliding it this way, it would push out to where the garage, the proposed garage area is. So I would say 
it, give or take, there's obviously a bit more depth here. It's, it is difficult to tell how that fits in, but I would say you're probably moving it to like this kind of point here. Okay. If you're using that as the line. In terms of the, uh, the general comments that were made, to speaking to the tests of the minor variance, the purpose and intent of an official plan and the zoning bylaw, the purpose of intent of a zoning bylaw is to implement the official plan. The official plan provides policies that relate to, and, and it's been referred to, what, how you protect stable neighborhood. In this case, I think the case has been made that the stable neighborhood is 25% lot coverage. With the understanding of the zoning law bylaw having a 19% number, I would say the official plan policies are clear. They're not speaking directly to a 19%. They're speaking to ensuring that neighborhoods are protected. In this case, we've seen the evidence that 25% is a pretty good number for what this stable community would be identified at. And in this case, the outdoor covered porch area is what's pushing beyond that number. So without that, you would actually be smaller than some of the existing houses today. That area is allowing for amenity space. It is the structure itself has a one story character. So I think the proposal in that case is keeping with the purpose and intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw because it is reflecting the character of the neighborhood. And in this case, we've heard evidence as well that this is a, a, an improvement on the existing condition. And for that purpose, it's also desirable. And then again, comparing it against the standard of the stable neighborhood, that additional area for the covered porch, in my opinion, is minor in nature to increase that lot coverage. In terms of the water issue, I will address that, the water concerns at the back. Oh, this, the, the, the city, the town would never allow approval on a a project that would increase the water flow from one property to another, even without having to have that discussion. I know that is a general principle that will go through the development permit process and there wouldn't be the intent of seeing additional water put to uh, the neighboring properties. That, that wouldn't happen. So I can say that with uh, certainty that that would be the case. So I would close with one point that the owner made to my attention. We, I don't think there is the contention to do with things like the, the flankage yard and the driveway location. He had considered turning the house towards Gloucester, and so would front. Uh, the concern there being uh, changing the character of the way the lot worked today, and also there are a number of trees in this location, um, seeking to avoid disruption and stick within the area where you see built form today. So with that, I would just reemphasize, I, I do believe that these variances meet the tests of the planning act. Any questions? Sir, we heard the suggestion that um, another way to perhaps address the coverage is, you know, uh, shave some portion of the building the other way, mm -hmm. you know, lengthwise. What does that do to the way the building's presented on the street, visually? Let's say if you decide to take the coverage off the back, if you were to, are you talking about moving it this right. way then? Yeah, let's say you moved it that way and brought the coverage down to whatever, 25 or 26 percent. What, what would that do from the visual presentation from uh, the street? Well, from a lot coverage perspective, um, it would reduce the overall number. The dwelling itself would, uh, this covered porch area really wouldn't be affected by that. Um, from the street here, you wouldn't see any difference. From Gloucester, uh, the same as well. You've got tree, trees in this area. I'd be very minimal. It's a, it's a very minimal facade actually that you would see from there. And then from this location, it is the, uh, the outdoor amenity space. So the effective visual impact from this side of the property would really start when you get to this wall, even though you would see the structure, you would see through that for the most part to where this wall starts. So I think doing doing exercises to shave a number down, I don't think affects the the general you know, form on the property, how this is gonna look, how any impacts that it would have on the neighborhood. I think it's just at that point, a number exercise. Okay, any questions? Okay, you had a question? Sure. Um, 
One question. It was raised by one of the, uh, the, the citizens here, the first person who spoke, that the covered porch sits on relatively flat graded land. But I look at your drawing and it doesn't. So I, I don't have the benefit of fully engineered drawings here. So I'm going to have to go on uh, the evidence put in front of me. So you have a person who says they pasted it off and it's sitting on flat ground and you are this drawing here. Is it real? Um, it, it certainly displays it as, as sitting well over a, a grade, but is that true? Yes, this is based on grading, existing grading. I think it's key, the swale and drainage issue is key, because if you were to try and address this, you would be creating a further problem. If you filled this to, to deal with the problem, you'd be pushing the water elsewhere. So this does represent the existing condition. I think the point I heard was that this area here is relatively flat. Um, so what the problem is, if you're, if you're building here, the only space you have is a many space, is this area which is challenged by the grading and the water issues. So by doing this, you're actually able to gain some of the space that otherwise would be a challenging space to use as outdoor open space. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it does reflect topographical information. And, and my, my last point was mainly is to, to uh, also pick up on, on what the last lady uh, was was presenting to us in terms of, of the porch and just to make it clear I guess it is true that if you add the porch on that you get up to 29 percent and if you take the porch off you get to 24 percent but it's also true if you took the whole garage out and left the porch you could get back to that number too so I do want to let everyone know that there isn't a huge emphasis necessarily on your discussion about the porch I'm simply listening to your argument but basically it's a math thing. Either the porch goes, the garage goes, one of the rooms goes, whatever it goes, and you could bring this, this house back into conformity. My only point with that would be the concern about massing and comparing something like the, the appearance of this area in massing compared to the appearance of this area in massing, taking off that width over here, much greater impact to the massing here. So, and you would gain the same impact on lock coverage. So if the concern is that lock coverage is creating a massing concern, I would disagree with that being that strictly having this 5% lock coverage does not create a massing issue. Yes, over here 5%, but 5% here is much different than 5% here. I was like it when somebody puts me in my place. You're right. Uh, that's true. I was just looking at it from a math perspective. Um, I have a follow-up question. Considering that this is going to be the facade off of Sumner, um, what type of proposed screening do you have for your backyard amenities? Because essentially that is considered your backyard, correct? So this portion that the neighbors are saying they're going to be looking at, um, I'd like to know, is there a fence there or hedges? What portion of it are they really going to be seeing? So would you be referring to if you were looking at it from this location? Yeah, like from the corner. So basically the neighbor who was speaking was looking at you diagonally across from set from 420. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be the neighbor from 177, which we've heard uh, has been sold, and it was really a question of yeah. drainage. Yeah. yeah. So there would be a, there would be a couple of things. They're going to be um, the, the grade itself is, is going to be uh, providing some natural screening. Um, the, the town has its standard bylaw uh, requirements for fencing, I, I'm sure. You, you will have some um, complication of the swale and the drainage and what can be put in there, but I'm sure the owner is uh, open to uh, what can be done. I know there are some trees there today, um, but through the site plan approval process, opportunity to provide screening there, I'm sure they'd be open to that. Okay, any and what about the corner view from the street? Yeah. Um, that's one of them I don't have a lot of deal. I, would, I wouldn't want to commit to this is what the owners are going to do. I think through the through that development permit process that you have, and that game, um, it is all, also would be tricky in terms of, I don't know if Pete maybe has a little more input, in terms of fencing with this being a flankage yard, um, where you would require fencing, uh, again, providing fencing along this line as well, I think would be an opportunity if, if you're providing the, the bylaw maximum requirement there. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, any final questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll take this matter to committee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we've had a good uh, discussion on this application. We've come to the point in time where we got to somehow make sense of all this and issue recommendations so we can get the process started. So who would like to volunteer for that? Mr. Tulowski, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to start by referencing the, I guess, I'll just say truly impressive uh, response from the neighborhood, both in writing and in oral presentations here tonight. There's always a but. Um, Mr. Chair, I didn't hear a lot of substantive issues raised from the community that spoke to the impact of the variances that are being proposed. Uh, nobody spoke to the variance on the flankage yard, which is for a nominal area of the front porch. Uh, there was some written comment about the driveway but again, it was in relation to the bylaw says 15, it should be 15, not 10. Um, with the driveway proposed being effectively in the same location and functioning the same way as the existing driveway and no concerns of its location being raised by the town's transportation engineering staff. Um, I did hear a lot of concern about coverage because it's a large number, not because there was an impact of that number. Um, Mr. Chair, we've been dealing with this zone for a long time and I believe it is not, it never was the intent of the zoning bylaw that the coverage be 19%. Uh, as we heard tonight, the coverage before the bylaw was enacted was significantly larger in the existing houses and 19%. Uh, I believe the intent was to allow discussions as we've had tonight and to assess new proposals in this neighborhood on their merits. Um, we saw tonight that the effect of coverage is 25% in the area and I, I don't believe that the 25% coverage of this house would be out of character. Um, I also, Mr. Chair, I do not see the additional 4% as it's being presented as a detriment. I actually see it as uh, a, an attractive feature to this house in that the covered porch, if that were the area that we are focusing on, it actually does two things. It mimics the grade of the property by having a lower element, the house stepping down in the same nature where the grade steps down. And I see that it actually softens the design of the house. And I do believe that this is a very effective solution. There was a comment about turning the house to front on Gloucester. I think that would be a, a terrible way of approaching this. Uh, I think this house, it had relates to the houses on the adjacent properties. It provides a strong and uh, not overpowering presence on the street. So I, again, Mr. Chair, the number of us asked the residents to explain the impact of the additional coverage and the size of the house and didn't hear a lot of, or any um, really from my perspective concerns raised other than it's a precedent issue, it's a number issue. Um, as Mr. Chair, you pointed out, uh, definition of minor is not a math uh, calculation. There's a lot more that goes into it than that. Um, I guess, uh, Mr. Chair, a long-winded way trying to ex ex hopefully explain to the community how um, we're taking their considerations into account, but um, at the end of the day, I don't believe that there's a undesirable impact to this proposal. 
Um, Mr. Chair, I do believe it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. And so I am going to recommend that the application be approved and make it subject to development proceeding in general accordance with the drawings provided and that a permit issue within two years. Okay, thank you for that discussion and recommendation. Mr. Charlebois. There's no question that this is a, um, that this was a tough one. Um, I'm just going to build on, on my colleagues' uh, statements here. Uh, with respect to the uh, um, the massing out onto Sumner, because nobody really raised it here, but in the the written submissions, there was there was a lot of talk about the fact that the other side of Gloucester is 25 percent, and this is on Gloucester, so it should be taken into account. But the fact of the matter is, is this building doesn't really front onto Gloucester and doesn't really add to Gloucester. It has no presence really on Gloucester. It's, it's really into Sumner, which puts it, I think, squarely into this 19% uh, area. Um, and I, I, do, I do take into, into account the, uh, the presentation, which I thought was fantastic, which showed the various homes in the area being at anywhere from 19 to 21, 22, in some cases getting close to 25%. Um, my natural inclination on this thing w was was to um, was to look at this thing. I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention to my notes here because there were so many little things about this thing. Uh, was was that the massing of the building itself onto Sumner, and by putting the porch on the east end of the, or sorry, the west end of the property, and that makes it front onto Sumner, and adding that hard landscaping on the bottom that makes it front onto Sumner. And so what you start to have is you have a long, long frontage on, onto Sumner. And the, the instinctive reaction on, on that one is, is to say that that's too much. Uh, when I walked around the whole neighborhood, which I did, and I looked at all the other houses, there isn't that much of a presence on, on, onto, uh, onto Sumner. And I have to admit that when I came here, my, my inclination was to, was to say that this was going to be too much. However, I, I'm listening to the presentations and it really unfortunately actually does come down to this discussion uh, and every site is different but it comes down in my opinion to this discussion about the uh, the appropriate use of that swale and adding in the uh, the porch area and I have to agree with my colleague that I think they've done a really good job of integrating that in um, I don't believe that adding a roof onto it takes away from um, uh, or detracts or uh, in any way in fact I think it, it actually makes the uh, it softens the site as he said so at the end of the day I'm going to support this motion also okay any further discussion see none okay so um, the recommendation is to approve subject to those two conditions and mr. Tuleski I believe you noted that there were multiple submissions on this application uh, written and the verbal uh, stuff tonight, so we'll reflect that on, on our decision. So, okay, put it to vote. Uh, approval subject to those two conditions. All those in support? Okay, no one opposed. It was unanimous approval. Okay, so that ends uh, the agenda items. We have confirmation of the minutes of September 5th, 2017. Who would like to move those minutes? Who would like to move the minutes? Mr. Uh, members, <laughs> someone needs to move the minutes of September 5th, 2017. Mr. Tulowski moves the minutes. All those in support? No one opposed. And adjournment? German request 930. Who moves the adjournment request? Mr. Hardcastle, all those in support? Okay, we're adjourned. Do not leave. You have signatures to apply to some decisions. Okay.